Um, so there are two ways of doing a build. Okay. The one way is let's say, and we're talking both on a shoestring budget. Yeah. So you're tight on cash. Um, and, uh, you, um, sorry, let me just let the cat out. Zoya, кошка хочет, Джерри, выгони его. Um, you either do things alone, uh, like, you know, you're building alone and you're slowly going alone. Um, but on a shoestring budget, doing alone is very, very slow. Very, very slow. Uh, obviously, some methods are faster, such as, you know, it also depends on the, on the amount of cash you have. Like, let's say if you have cash to buy the aircrete blocks and you've taken the time in winter to make all the form work. Yeah, those big forms for windows, doors, the big, big arched window. Then if you have those bricks already bought, then, you know, aircrete method with the bricks is pretty fast. Aircrete, Harry, who's here, he's also developed a fast method. Um, but we all have challenges, but, um, you know, even working, working alone generally on a shoestring budget takes a long time, which takes time away from everything else. Um, like I have a good example of two winters, two summers in a row. I was building that whole thing in an abandoned village with those white polypropylene bags. I'm sure you've seen all the footage that Zoe and I did this Watilarium sacred geometry. And in two seasons, okay, I did not even reach out of the ground. <laughs> um, you know, the tire wall went up higher, but everything else, uh, the bags are just, uh, you know, reached the ground because that that's building alone. Um, two years gone and look, um, there is also a thing with, you know, the inner feeling of anxiety It's something I want to touch on at the end and maybe Zoya will come in, but, uh, yeah, if you, if you want to suffer and blame life, <laughs> um, which was what I did, then you'll do things backwards and things will take slow and then you'll and then I blamed life and eventually I ran away. Uh, at the end of um, last season in August, I just jumped in the car and I drove 4,000 miles because I said, no, this is not working. I threw my toys out and, 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 I, and I ran from the whole construction site. And um, all I'm saying is, is that I, I believe that I plan to actually let it run like a, a bad way my previous construction site so i could then say it's not working and let's get the hell out of there and i want a different life but if we are in a good headspace which is a whole different conversation um which is our consciousness integration work which i'm keep on doing every single day and separately i'll chat about this um but then you start to get you know you want to get more professional Okay, um, using an effect of the lever, meaning, so let me give you a good example, okay, um, and I'll show you a calendar, share screen, let's, let's, let me just share this calendar with you, and I'll give you a file, okay, um, so let's look at the, uh, last week, for example, okay, um, so compacted the sand and i'll show you videos now by the way of of this okay um uh, and i'll show you how i just started using this calendar again and it's pretty incredible and i'll share it with you so uh original plan for hyper adobe my mixer breaks and i'm in panic um and uh yeah because it's the same as acre harry's mixer the big petrol one with pedals the pedals are very good for clay. When you're doing hyper adobe, it's a dryish mix, which uses generally sand, sandy mix. So it's viscous. It's very hard for the pedals to move. So in this case, a drum is much, much better if you're doing hyper adobe. Okay. But I have this pedal one and it broke really bad. There's nothing wrong with my engine. My cogs, my cogs went. 
and waiting for two weeks or three weeks for these cogs to be repaired or ordered. I just didn't want to be bothered. And so I rented it. Uh, 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 so then my Hyper Adobe mission moved original plan and then it moved further. Yeah. So basically I have, uh, whilst we're on it, I'll show you. So I've got Earthworks, carp uh, Hyper Adobe, Carpentry, Glazing, Cement, Plaster, Electrical, Plumbing, Flooring, Insulation, Prep Work, Rental of Equipment, Maintenance, like something breaks down like a car, and Purchases. And then Purchases, I put here like 6K, uh, lab staff cost at the bottom three three k three thousand and everything is in rubles so don't be scared to divide everything by eighty and um uh, yeah but I I'm leaving the currency out so you can type in your own okay so it could be two hundred dollars here instead of six k for you yeah and here it could be fifty dollars for staff or two hundred dollars wherever okay and then six k and three k gets added up and they get thrown in here. And these things get added up and they give you a total cost for the week. Um, this little thing in yellow is what is my general plan for the week? I mean, I just added this little thing today. So it's like finance. I'm working on making finance. I ran out of cash. <laughs> so my plan for this week is finance. My plan for next week is to work on subfloor, which uh, means uh, like uh, perlites, uh, a truckload of perlite for, for in my case and um you know uh rebar but not metal because i don't want to disconnect myself from the energies of the earth so i'm doing the um the other type of rebar i think it's plastic with little metal tie wires and um, anyway so subfloor and then the flavor of the uh, next week is fence so here i'm going with this plan and why it worked let me go view this example this morning um, now you can see it's 59,000. So that's about $700, uh, which, you know, I don't have that right now. So, uh, you know, and the biggest pr price of that is this, uh, 10 cubic meters of puffed clay. In my case, in your case, it could be pumice or scoria. Yeah. It's a truck load. It's a truck load. Okay. It's like $600 in your country. It could be way more. Anyway. So big cost. Uh, I don't have it. So Zoe is like, this morning why don't we do dig out the holes for the fence and the fence is only in a week's time guys up until i started using up until today before today if somebody would like zoe would throw my wife uh, something into the mix that and i have this plan in my head i'm not using a calendar but i have a rough plan in my head and suddenly she tells me oh, let's do this i would freak i would like I would panic because I have this plan and don't mess with my plan. And, you know, usually I'd go and buy this pumice, you know, old me. And then I'd sit without it. Or when my concrete mixer broke, I was going to buy. I spent two days uh, trying to find um, a, a concrete mixer I could buy. And eventually, uh, you know, realizing that I'd buy it and then my whole construction site would stop. <laughs> yes, I have a concrete mixer, but I, all my money is gone to a concrete mixer. I have no money for labor and anything. And I'll get back to labor or versus building alone. I've already had an experience of building alone. It's insanely slow. So let me show you some pictures. So uh, there's a mixer broke. I'll show you some pictures. Hyper Adobe. When I got my act together, okay, I finally hired, hired, hired the, um, uh, the machine, thanks to Zoya, which I also panicked when she said that. But up until today, she threw today at me, so why don't we do the fence holes? And I'm like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> because all I did is I moved one, okay, we have one stage of entire phase, the phase, let's say, next two weeks, okay, or whatever. I moved one stage instead of the following week, I moved it and I swapped them around. I have a budget for that, which is much less to dig out the holes. I just need a, that machine, which I just got with, you know, with a cork, whatever it's called, it digs holes. Yeah. Even if that's all I do for now, but my construction side does not stop because the fence is important. Uh, we have wild dogs uh, eating our cats. And I think even the second one, um, because we left our cats on the land and we moved to a flat that we're renting not so far away from our land so fence is like super important so we can get those dogs away from 
um, our property so our, our our cats can be safe. Like super important, you know. We had a death death on our hands just the other day. Um, so, but just as important is um, the other things of construction site like subfloor. So, so let me show you what I what was the mixer. Okay. So there we're starting to build. I have two men. I order two men, two two laborers. Yeah, I get the new string. Uh, you know, like so I get the, the the you know we compact the sand. You've seen it on the calendar. Yeah, and boom, there goes my mixer. The cogs are eaten, completely eaten, and. I should have at that moment, because it was still in the morning, told both laborers, guys, I'm really, really sorry. And I'm sure they would have understood. But I waited two thirds of the day out because I really didn't have work for them. I planned to build Hyper Adobe and right in the middle of my construction, we're doing the serious operation, turning cogs around, thinking that if we turn it, that we could, and it worked. It gave us an extra half an hour, you know, um, but yeah um bottom line is that uh that's the first day we only had half a bag done and and then it was two days downtime and i get this rented thing and i can hear by the noise it's struggling but and and we get with my wife and we test it out before we get laborers because those laborers cost me two laborers full day count your money <laughs> you know that's cash so anyway, I did was always okay. Let's let, let's get let's get one guy for next day. It it, it 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 will work. So we did just a little test with her, and then look, three days. Uh, first day, um, all of that. So I got two guys, and they're just mixing and mixing and mixing and mixing, and I'm using the trolley, and I'm building, 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 building. Second day, we had all the walls, uh, this wall done. And I was stressing about it. And your building site will also be like that. You'll stress about it first time. And like, oh my God, and, and this and that. And then you'll, when you relax into things and you stop panicking, you'll actually realize, oh, I, I, I could put little pieces of wood then I could ha have, have an counter without, and mounting a counter without using expensive anchors. Anchors are expensive. They're going to cost you a few dollars each anchor. And this is free because these are off cards. So this is what happens when you come down, okay? And you can only come down when you plan. And before I knew it, we had this wall build, we had the front wall build and the back wall build. And guess what? In the same three days, uh, I decided, well, let's prep for the workshop. And this is the third room, okay? And here I did something interesting. I went versus doing separate walls of front and side. I did one continuum. One continuum, look at that. One continuum. So one continuum means all same height, which in which means an insulation will be at the same height. So three days later, no bullshit. Three days later, <laughs> I have I have a wall ready for the workshop as well. There it is going. Okay. So instead of just getting one wall done, in three days I had everything done. The front and back uh, 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 um, foundation wall for the glass facade, for the glazing, and both of the sides walls, all in three days. So this is what happens when you, Anna was clever enough to put little pieces of wood with nails so I could anchor my glass facade to them. Again, so I don't, use, don't have to buy expensive anchors. So I think what I'm trying to show you is that um, you, what, what if if you're planning your build things go a hell of a lot smoother three, three days all your walls are done for an 18 foot by 18 foot uh big uh arch that that arch all you i mean the first arch i was so stressed and guys i built eight kilometers of hyper adobe but still because i'm in a new country i'm using you know uh i was still you know shitting myself but now on the third build i, I, I whipped it <laughs> so what i'm trying to say is that's uh, and then when money runs out you look at your calendar and we'll get back to calendar and they said i'm out of cash so that what can i do alone i have some scraps of wood yeah 
Um, so this is now, I just came from this right now. I mounted uh, uh, to these logs I had done the other day, and now I'm just uh, putting um, pieces of wood for the water tank and a shower, the famous outdoor shower, you know, because, it, it, you know, you need to wash yourself. So it's, it, I know it's just summertime, but still. So what I'm trying to say is that if you have, um, let's get back to the calendar. If you have a plan, which you will, okay, and this is so important. I'm starting to look at this every day, okay? So, like, what's today? 11th, Sunday. Um, dig out all the holes and start cementing. So, that didn't happen today. So, I move it to tomorrow. I'm getting one laborer, okay? Now, the whole pumice scoria for the subfloor, it's going. Yeah, I'm going to move it to next week, okay? Um, by the way, these little blocks here, th they're the ones that you copy and paste because they have four, four they're made up of four blocks, yeah? So, and these are also made up of four blocks. So when you want to uh, do something, let's say carpentry, you, you control C that, control V that, and you start typing, um, whatever blah 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 okay so that's where you copy them from because i'm going to give you this calendar so and then when this mess happens you can control c control v just to clean up yeah um okay so the reason that i was able to stay so calm for the first time in my life this morning this is a fresh example is i'm looking at subfloor i'm saying well there's not this money in my bank account let me do the some of the fence stuff. I don't even have the money for fence poles. Uh, those uh, there's thirty six poles uh, for the fence. I don't have money for that, but I have enough money to rent a machine and to get one laborer and to get that done with him tomorrow. And then at the next phase, I have a little bit. Then I might take a day off to send some emails, to do a YouTube video, or in your case, might be doing some freelance work or going for your day job or doing some online work and then you know working to make finance in fact i've even made finance story because we all need to make finance specific actions to generate income let's test it it's in black and yellow so it's nice and visible and then you know you you know if you need to make your phone bigger um yeah like send an email or or you know, so all your all your maybe specific. Obviously, you'll have a calendar for this, your own standard uh, um, calendar that you use from you know. Uh, but this is just a little bit of uh, like an overview because I'm finding that I couldn't manage a build with a with a with a like a calendar like this, you know, and just a, a whole week planner. I couldn't. Uh, and with this thing, I can because I'm I'm putting in the prices straight away. The prices add up here, and now I know. Oh, okay, I need to only tomorrow. I need three thousand, which is what like um, uh, forty dollars, fifty dollars for the laborer, and I need to get the machine which I got today. Rental of equipment. Yeah, let's go. So rent uh, rented equipment. I I did that today. That cost me one k. Um, and then you add it all up and you basically, you know, you, your now your price for the week drops and you're like, okay, 20,000. So in your case, it could be $300. Okay. I have $300. Yeah, I do. Um, with a safety little cushion on the side, you know, uh, we're still paying rent and we have to eat and blah, blah, blah. So this becomes really affordable. And then you do things according to, um, you know, so just to just to summarize, you're either building like alone and or and there's nothing wrong with building alone. Like I went and I did the shower in you know mounting pieces of wood by myself today, and there's nothing wrong with it, and it's great, and I don't need labor for that. So I went and I worked alone. But there's certain things that take 50 times longer if you're alone versus just having one extra person, you know. And the reason that I whipped those hyper Adobe bags in three days, because I had two guys and for half a day, when I was really struggling, I asked one of the guys to call his friend 
So I had three guys for half of the day and the rest of the time I had two, two, two guys and we pumped it. We pumped it because they were carrying me buckets and I was moving with the trolley and reloading the trolley. And that's why I had a, a lot done. So that's what I call the effect of the lever. Um, and uh, if you use that, let, let's say, guys, two seasons <laughs> and I messed around. Look, I had those tires pounded as, as well on the previous build. So you guys all know what, a, what previous build I'm talking about, where I, I, I wasted two seasons. Let me show you. Um, August two to one. Yeah, that construction site. So that's at the end of first season. <laughs> and, um, you know, there's autumn already, beautiful colors. But that's all I had done, you know, like tires. And first season, I barely dug, I dug the foundation all alone. I, I didn't have, I, 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 just to remind you, I wanted the suffering experience deep inside my own myself and i got the suffering experience i really suffered <laughs> um yeah and uh, the second year i don't want to waste time but uh, yeah gosh that's the that's the house design by the way that's what i was attempting to build but i didn't yeah so we really we had it from scratch and i have a lesson for you in watilarium on this but look, I'm not going to wa waste time on, on, on all of this, but the bottom line is that this thing took a really, really, really long time and I suffered and because I wanted to do it. Here, three days, I have all my walls up. Boom. Uh, four feet high. Or one foot for sub floor uh, and all of that insulation and wherever else and um, or air channels and three foot above ground that the arch can go on top. So alone, <laughs> I'm going to say something scary. It would have taken me two to three months. I'm sorry to be so, I don't know why, but even if I pumped, uh, maybe a month, maybe a month, if I pump alone. First of all, when, you work, when you're working alone, like after two, three hours, you go and have a cup of tea and you're tired and you go to have a nap and this and that. And then before you know your, your, your season, boom, Oops, sorry, finished. And then the second season, boom, oops, finished. And you have nothing done. Here, we are just in the beginning of June and I have a box standing. Yeah, a box that needs, sure, it needs some finishing. And um, um, th this is what we have done. Uh, yeah, we installed the windows, doors, all secondhand. And this cost me three grand. Um, yeah, and I, and I now covered all the sides. So we're not even on the 10th of June or 10th, 11th of June, and I have a box ready. Now we're building a second box. Uh, we're actually building a fence and then subfloor. We decided we're not going to, we're going to pause on the second box because of finances. And, um, but once I have the fence and the subfloor, I'm starting to build the, the second box. Let me give you a whole overview. You can see what uh, what this whole thing looks like. Here it is. So there's there's for the workshop where in August uh, folk are coming from America and Europe. That's for them prep work. So that's going to be one bolt. Um, that's what we all have done. Uh, I made a mistake with polycarbonate uh, because polycarbonate is two foot shorter than the roof I ordered because it doesn't come in longer lengths. Um, it does, but it's very expensive. Anyway, so um, lots of mistakes, but I'm, I'm going to share that with you in the Watilarium course. So there's the arch, and that's the second room there, uh, which, and we're going to, so basically by the end of the season, I'm going to have three boxes up by the end of summer. And in, the in autumn, I'll have them, I'll have them finished, insulated, glazed, uh, ovens made, and floors made and then hopefully if all goes well by the end of autumn i have three homes ready not homes you could call a big room but they'll have a second floor there's a little bit of a second floor there there just for two people to sleep um and then use the cold time to finish them inside but basically use the summer to um 
to get the boxes so you're out of the elements. So, you know, so basically beginning of autumn, it's all covered with glass and finished with offcuts of wood. And then I can start insulating, but at least I don't have snow falling on my head. We can stoke an oven and finish working inside later on. So I think I'll pause for now and um, let's open it up for Q&A on this, what, what I just said. Okay, so who, who wants to share anything? I have a question. Yeah. This is Tina. Yes, Tina. Um, have you talked about how you do your electricity or? Um, okay, so this is what I've done for now. In those walls, I've just plugged in a whole bunch of little pieces of offcuts of uh, hose pipe. Uh, hose pipe piping, cheap piping that you can just insert as you build. And uh, I've just stuck a few everywhere. Some are for cold water, hot water, um, which is obviously a wa water between rooms. The water has to be moved in from underneath from the well or, yeah, from the, <laughs> from the well, because water in a cold climate is a very different story to uh, water uh, in, in normal climate because it freezes. So it has to come in underneath and up. So what I've done that for the Tina, it's a very good question, is um, I, let's see if I can find it. I basically, I put a, before I build, I don't even have a pipe this size, but I've put in a log, a piece of a log, and I've put two pieces of wood on top of it, and I stuck it under the foundation. So, and I did it on, on the front and back, on the front of the room. Let, let me see if I can find it for you. And basically, you know, what that means is that I, um, there it is. Can you see that log? So where, there is another one on on the uh, on other on just a little bit on the side. Here is another one. Hold on. So that's that's underneath my foundation. So when I need to move in sewage or move out sewage, move in water, I just kick out that log out, and uh, I have three little sticks above it. So it basically holds the foundation. They go past it. Uh, there they are those little woods and off cuts and basically then i can bring in anything i want and the same in, in my walls uh here i haven't put in anything yet but in the other walls um there you go you can see these little pipes yeah there's another one so i don't i haven't planned where the kitchen is going to be or what uh you know, I, I haven't. I, all I, because I'm, and it's not very unlike me because I usually plan to death myself, <laughs> as you can see with all those 3D visuals and what's hilarious. But really, I'm, you know, I wasn't planning even on building these arches. I was planning on building the what's hilarious, the latest one that I designed. But my wife said, Alosha, uh, you're going to take time to build what's hilarious because it's very complex home. Uh, you're figuring a lot of things out and we need somewhere to live in. So, and it, you know, can we get something fast? So six meters wide, six meters long and six meters high are the three rooms that I'm getting done this summer. So I can get that out of the way, get my family inside. But uh, if, you know, that's a, that's to ask, answer your question about electricity. And there is there is the bath coming along. If any of you have seen my um, South African bath, I'm, I'm basically sculpting. So from scratch, the toilet is going to be here. So again, I've put in, you know, talking about the fittings, I've put in a sewage pipe here already. It runs underneath here. Here I've just put a log in uh, because it was really on the fly. It was, we had some time at the end of the day. So I just put a little log in that I can kick out and put a gray water fitting in there um you know yeah i know a lot of it was on the fly and if you are doing it you might do it better and more professionally than me and have a really good plan and i'm and i will i will design a blueprint from this home once i build the three of them i'll have a professional blueprint that i'll be selling that will include the bath and the shower and um 
let me try and show you the how the bath will be sculpted out. And it, Tina, in terms of the um, um, uh, in terms of the uh, electrical, um, basically you, you 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 if you either run them horizontally, the um, you know then it goes between the bags. Um, in this case, I would recommend maybe if you have a plan <laughs> of your home to do a little piece of wire that you can just hook in and pull in your um, your your conduit towards the wall. And if you're running vertically, then you would just chisel away a little bit of just a little bit into the bag, just a little bit, and then you replace. Um, it's all in the dome course, and it will be in the Watsalarum course. But for now, it's all in the dome course. How it did it. It's it's figured out pretty well, so it's all good. And here here's what the bath looks like. When it's finished. Uh, yeah, let's show, show another one where it's painted. Oh, I'm having a bath. Uh, the only thing, it wasn't smooth enough. It was scratching my bum. Um, there we go. But it worked. And uh, insulation. It got the bath because it didn't have insulation like pumice or scoria in, in separating it from the ground. Because of mass and the law of thermodynamics, these walls were just so cold. And that's in South Africa that even the hot water cooled down pretty quickly because of the mass. So that's why I'm doing those thermal breaks. And in the actual bath container, I will I will put in pumice or scoria just to separate separate yourself from the ground. It's too it's too cold. It seals seals the cold unless you need it. So uh, Tina, we'll get to the electrical later on in the Watsalarum course. It will be there, and I'm recording obviously these arches, and these arches are part of what's Larium course. Um, although they're not what's Larium, but they're quick homes that you can build yourself, and there will be electrical and plumbing, and it will be all recorded and placed in there. It's just a quick home to get yourself under roof, rent free, debt free. Um, so far, this home cost me, it's not finished, but it's three grand. And with the top triangles, and even if they're not glass, they're just covered with wood for now, I can already move in in summer and slowly build up or get some polystyrene from the dump if I really am tight on cash. And Aircrete Harry's got a fantastic video turning um, turning the polystyrene into something usable, like you can make your own little Aircrete blocks with polystyrene. There's the other polystyrene guy, uh, uh, polystyrene Acre, just uh, check him out on YouTube. We all got inspired by him. I think it's Andrew. I don't know what his channel is. But anyway, so, and you slowly, you know, slowly get yourself insulated and warm. But if you're under roof, um, track in some water if you have to in the beginning, you know, or, you know, figure being under roof is a really great step. Obviously, you have other issues like you want to get a permit and all that other BS, and I don't want to go into it. It's, it's, it's fascism. It's literally fascism. And until you start understanding that it's fascism, that you're not allowed to build what you want on your land and, and live in it, until you understand that it's fascism, you'll, you'll complain and struggle. And, and, and the more you waste your time on that, the more system will have you so choked up that eventually you, want, you might struggle to leave the country you're in. But it's fashion. You should be able to live, build what you want, as big as you want, not within reasons. Our, our limitations are 60 feet high and, uh, and, and moving it when you want, you know. And when you come to our workshop, if you do come to our workshop in Russia, you'll see all homes are so different because people just design them on the fly. And if that home falls on your head, it's like your own fault. You can't sue anybody. So that, that's, that's non-fashion. So you got to understand the re the difference in fascism and non-fascism, and these are uh, this is the first principal difference that we talk about when we uh, when we talk about uh, just natural building. So yeah. Anyway, um, any other questions? I have a couple of questions. Um, how are you going to go from the one that's built to the other three rooms? Are they going to be going like 
from outside to the inside? Or are you going to have like a hallway or something? And the other question is, where will you put your greenhouse that's attached? Okay, it's a very good question. Um, ideally, ideally, uh, I'm going to be built, not ideally, my next set of arches is going to be very differently designed. And that's going to be more close to Earthship. So the stem, the, the wall, like what you're seeing behind Marco, if you could picture Marco there, the top picture, where his solar panels are, the bottom of the solar panels will be a continuous uh, hyper adobe wall with arches left in them, yeah? Like a bridge over a river, yeah? And then in those arches, a home will be fitted. And that wall will support the burial so the top of the homes is, can be walked upon and you don't lose space. And you can make your second story there or greenhouse there on top. But off that wall at the bottom of Marco's bottom solar of panels will be the greenhouse. So that's Temel, just like an all our artillery. In the current design, these rooms are more like separate. So one is for uh Zoya's mom one is for us and one is for Zoya's daughter so we don't really need to mingle between them everybody has their own space but yes there's a lot more thought that could have gone into this but as i said we're like i just was like let's build let's let's this is like this is building without planning and as i'm building i'm refining even the planning process itself with the calendar and of course ironing out the mistakes so um, you know, what, what one could do, for example, the side walls, which are only three feet high, with a subfloor that are four feet high. You know, so the four feet currently, but the floor will come up one foot. And so those side walls could be, let's say, you know, to, the, to your height, just above your height. And that's where the greenhouse could go. And then you can have a shallower arch, not such a tall arch, a shallower arch, because here's two curves of two timber pieces, 18 foot long. Yeah. In my case, 15 foot long, uh, uh, but in the future, I won't cut them. But if you go higher walls, your walls, yeah, then you could have an, an arch with just one curve, meaning one piece of timber, like we did in Siberia. You remember that one. It, it, it works out pretty low, but if you have walls that are, um, what's your height? Six foot. Let's say six foot. If you have six foot high walls, then you have a, a shallow arch, then you have something what Marco has behind him. Yeah, so you still have that height of about nine foot, uh, no, bigger. You'd, you'd have probably a, a 10, 11 foot high at the highest point. Um, but then your your greenhouse could, for example, go off that. So, so halfway through the window and the top part of the window would be exposed past the greenhouse, it, it, that front greenhouse. And that would be the walkway, just like an airship that connects all the rooms. And that's what I'll be planning on doing in the next set of arches that I'll be doing, but I'll be doing them bearable. So they'll be much, much stronger. I can't bury this roof. This, this arch, Landsat arch with two pieces of wood le leaning on each other is not bury bearable material. It will implode, okay? The arch like Marcos uh, or like the one in Siberia was one curve, meaning Roman arch. That's very strong geometry. As you can see in, in Siberia, we, be, we buried a wooden vault. It's very unheard of that people bury anything other than ferro-cemented vaults. Ferro-cement or stones then or whatever, they bury those, but bricks. But very seldom you hear of people burying anything of wood, especially when it's this thin. Sure, you got fat logs, you know, and you have them every two feet apart, you could bury that if you, you know, it's mother, <laughs> but that's very costly if you have those big logs. And then the one in Siberia, let me just share pictures with you so you could uh, uh, just know what I'm talking about. Um, so, yeah, let's, uh, okay, so that's what we're talking about. This is like an overkill <clears throat> and that's bearable structure. Uh, three timber pieces underneath. The same ones I did now, but I did them like this, as I said. This is lethal. Um, and a cross section. So if it has back pressure from the back or forward, it won't move because of the diagonal 
those diagonals yeah um yeah so all i'm saying is is that um it's like this oh here's a picture this is what i'm planning here i'm glad that i uh, kim you asked um here we go this will give you a really good uh, understanding of what the next set of arch is going to be and i'm and I'm already investigating two different types of arches. The one was with straw bales, but let's just finish the story. Yeah, you guys can see this, yeah? So this is, this is what I'm planning to do for the next one. And this is that hyper adobe wall that I spoke of. And off that will mount the greenhouse, the big greenhouse. But what I was trying to tell you, Kim, is that uh, these walls could be placed higher and then the arch, not so high, but shallow, yeah? And of these side walls, which could come up to here, for example, could be the greenhouse. Um, I'll be the guinea pig, and I will show you a refined version. Uh, 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 even on this structure now, I'm already making made so many mistakes. But the straw bale, uh, this, you know, uh, it, oh my God, it's amazing. Yeah. I came across this picture and then I just found, just Googled it yesterday. Um, what I liked about here, because insulation cost me, you know, close to, a th in your country, go more than $1,000, more than $1,000. And here he used straw bales. And look at this. Yeah. So he made these arches and they're just a bit thicker. And then he just used standard straw bales and made a huge home. Um, and I really like it. I really, really like it. Um, because it's a natural, I'm sure the energy inside this home would be incredible. So this is a second story. So that's the one arch. And the other one is I'm thinking of not having both curves, but the one continuous curve. But that will, that little top part the wood does not bend it breaks so that's why the you know plywood but plywood is toxic <laughs> so i'm trying to find non-toxic plywood which is hard in my country i'm sure in your country you could find but it comes with formig form formidable hide or some very toxic glue that they're using there yeah so uh, but that's what i'm researching any other questions? Or who wants to share anything on from their side, from their own builds or any observations? I have a question. Uh, did you drop the ID of the thermal mass on the northern side, your house? Oh, as I explained earlier, um, this is a quick home to move into and on the northern side i have a beautiful forest and i mean beautiful forest i'm on the edge of sub development sub 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 development yeah a neighborhood on an edge and they want to develop further because we have a railway station a railway line about 100 feet away but between the rail maybe two 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 hundred feet yeah uh, but between the railway line and our home, which is the last home in the neighborhood, we have the stunning, stunning forest, which it would be a sin uh, <laughs> to, 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 to lose that. And uh, let me show it to you. Oh, gosh, why? Uh, and another problem is that this, this uh, plot is very tiny. Um, then, by the way, they're installing gas. They're installing gas in our uh, neighborhood, and this is they're doing it there because that's I'm the we're the last home on an edge of the development. So they're moving a LPG gas uh, right to our doorstep. So pre it's pretty cool, I'd say. Um, so this beautiful forest, which is you know all that. Um, I want to I want to be able to sit in the winter time or any time <laughs> and look at this forest because uh, you know you can imagine not having that so 
if it would be a watilarium, I would still have a second story and then have on the second story, maybe like another room or a dome with a large bay window or something that looks out onto the forest. So it, no, Marco, I haven't lost the idea of uh, um, the watilarium and we are going towards this, uh, uh, you know, this one. This is what I want to be building. When, once I get these three arches up, this, this is the one I'm going to be building, you know, I, the, which will be buried from the northern side, of course. Um, but this is going to take time and I need to live somewhere. I'm tired of renting. Um, I'm 41, 42 this year. So tired of renting and to wait for an amazing thing like this, you know, I need funds and funds are dribbling in. As I said, I couldn't afford, a, 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 you know, it's really like, it's like $50 in my bank account, <laughs> you know, $100. Uh, and then and then suddenly we sell a course and uh, we have some more cash coming in and then we carry on building. So I'm talking about a realistic scenario. Um, yeah, as you know, with your own build, Marco, you know, you're experimenting. So, you know, if you don't have anywhere to live, experimenting can have confrontations with your wife <laughs> because get the freaking roof over your head man <laughs> so yeah this is this is the reality any, any other observations or sharings hi um just a couple of points i've seen on you know, through project planning stuff uh, a couple of items that might be of interest one is some way in the calendar to link items that are dependent so you know you can't you can't go and do this thing until you get something else done right and so that's usually part of a project uh planning um software tool or whatever that helps you with that the the other one Victor, component... i do i do have just just on the subject i do have yeah. the prep work Obviously, you know, it's linked in my head, like, um, for example, before I spread out the pumice for my subfloor, I need to plumb yeah. in the uh, outlets for gray water and black water. First, it was in purple under prep work, which I have there. But then I thought, let me, you know, leave it in plumbing, you know, because it is plumbing. But that needs to be plumbed underneath the, the, the pumice or the insulation before I dump a truckload into the home. So of course, right. but yes, it is linked in my head. I don't, I don't know how else to link it except that you know you, you think it through, and that's why right. the so you know if you're spreading the the pumice, then you need to, yeah, yeah. It's just it's, it's nice to have a something that will link them or link your pieces together. For example, if you when you have to move one piece forward because there's a delay, oh, um, a lot of times it'll push other things out, right? And so without having those links shown show somehow, then it's very easy to sort of push something out till next week, but then you've left a couple of items for this week that can't really be done unless that other thing is done. And and it's been pushed into the next week. So anyway, that's the just only one. way I think, I think of a Victor is like, I've selected those multiple things and I could yeah. have them, uh, oh, this function can it be used with multiple selections. Aha, uh -huh, I see what you mean. Okay, so right now, yeah. one by one, that's all I have. Yeah. Control yeah. X and move it over. It's just yeah. something to keep it. It's just something to keep in mind when working with these planning tools, right? Is the interlinks between items. And then kind of intertwined with this idea is this link of critical path. So when you're planning projects, usually there's there's a, a path that links the different components together. And there's one, uh, one called critical path, which is the, you know, everything else sort of hinges on the success of each of the steps along the critical path. Like, give us an example. In, 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 um, like, for example, from my build or from, I've shown you pictures and calendar of, of that hyper Adobe and mixer breaking in red there. Well, I mean, for example, let's, let's say your critical path would be, uh, you know, you need to get your walls up before you can put your roof on, and then your, your, you know, once you have your roof on, then you, can, you could build your 
you know, your glass uh, front or whatever, you know. So you have these like this, this. These are you can't do one before the other. And it, it becomes your critical path because these are not this, the smaller items that are hint like when you're doing your walls you've got certain steps and certain things and certain amount of people and resources you need for each step along the way but you really like if, unless you have the walls up you can't really get started on the roof right so um yes yeah. that becomes your critical path so it's just good to keep in mind when you start moving things around you know move moving your if your walls are taking an extra week or two it's pushing your whole roof and everything basically your critical path becomes extended right whereas moving the individual components that are on your critical path probably doesn't really affect your schedule too much right like you can switch things around if it's raining you can do things that you can do indoors and then if it's you know so on you can move things around but if you start pushing your your critical path components it critical path component move moves and scheduling affect your overall schedule right and then you, then you have hard stop times like you know the fall right at a certain point you just can't keep pushing out so um, but it's good to see how your critical path keeps getting moved around you can see whether you're going to be within your operation window of getting things done right so yeah um yeah yeah I hear you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, so we're talking about really important things like walls and um, exactly. So there is a specific. Uh, so there's the foundation, and before the foundation, uh, one needs to maybe even run some pipes. Um, in my case, I didn't, so I've just put those logs in under the foundation, which I can kick out and run any amount of pipes I want, or plaster them up if I'm not going to use that space. It's like a a sleeve yeah uh, and by the way those sleeves you can get uh, and they're very useful you can go to like a water city water uh, water uh, you know water management companies that do and ask them if they have offcuts and they'll give you the they might give like offcuts any any length one foot two foot three foot long and uh, you could get those offcuts for free uh, and they're very useful in installing them in Hyper Adobe um, to, to, to later install anything you want uh, up to a, a, a sewage pipe running through them later on. So like a pipe like that, sewage pipe is like this. You can have a sewage pipe, a gray water pipe. Um, but yes, Victor, I hear you. Um, so in, in this, in our case, um, I'm just starting with this calendar for natural building. I know there's far superior systems for project management, but um, this is a very rudimentary thing that I developed that I'll share with you guys and let's keep it open source and maybe you will find better ways of doing it um, and, and share back with us. Uh, I'm, I'm all up for it, but at, even as it is now, a practical solution is a, a, an example from this morning where my wife said, well, if, you know, we're struggling to get this truckload of pumice, why don't we get the fence up? And it was the first time in my life I was able to just, okay, cool. There wasn't a panic. There wasn't a, 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 a you know, um, aggravation, stress. I just said, I looked at my calendar, but that's so easy because that's just a week later. So I flipped them around and, okay, that waits. And then and this was a really good example of, um, how a calendar of planning. Another thing that really I have to show you is this budget. Um, because I myself have a tendency, and Victor, I'll come back to you now, sorry, um, but I have to share. You do not have to have all the money for your entire home holding in your hand. And I don't either. But you might, I, I end up stressing because I'm like, ah, I need $7,000. I need $7,000. Where do I get this money? And, and I end up stressing out about $7,000. And when I get back to this calendar, I look at my week. I'm like, 
but I only need 350 for this week. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Uh, and then I can continue building. Yeah, sure, you can continue building. You just need $350. Like, sure. Okay, let's send out an email. Oh, boom. Sorry, there's a course sale. What's it, Aram sold? 300 bucks. We can build. We're like, woohoo, jumping up and down. And, uh, or Jeff paid the other day $150. That immediately gave me a power to, to do two days of building. I know it's, uh, you know, uh, probably in America, it's useless prices. You know, what are you talking about? 150 bucks. But in, in our country, 150 bucks uh, allowed me to hire some labor, hire a machine. And in fact, Jeff's $150 is what had those walls built <laughs> because I already have the bag and I have, and I had the cement. Uh, I bought the cement like Harry, I bought, you know, we bought like uh, 50 bags at a time and I didn't have to worry about cement. So yeah, so, so, so very important. I'll just repeat it. You do not have to have all the funds of your entire home to start building. You have, a, a, and even you, I'm looking at this pumice, this pumice is so expensive. You could, if your home is risen above the ground, or let's say it is, you know, and on a swampy area or wherever, you could have wood shavings. If you, you know, have proper plastic and it's not, um, you know, getting moisture, you could have wood shavings for free filled if your home is not on the ground but raised above and i've researched a few videos people are doing it for eight years um amazing results and now suddenly instead of uh, a truckload of expensive pumice you're getting wood shavings for free that you can just get yourself in your own pickup or whatever in those big bags or you know so i spoke of two things one you don't have to have all the funds of your home to start building now we looked back and we were like, because I, I went into my bank and I looked at the last three months expenditure and I'm like, oh my God, $12,000, you know, for me, it's big money. You know, we spent $12,000 on, 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 on the, the excavator, getting the land sorted, but I couldn't believe it. Like, where the hell? I was so worried. What's this amount? Oh my God. And then I was panicking. Who did I spend that money on? You know, like $2,000. Who did I pay that for? And then eventually I find out, oh, that's the bags. I bought the bags or I bought a container, you know, the, the 20 foot container. So basically, what I'm trying to say, looking back, you're looking at this huge sum and you can't believe it. But as you're running along, it's $300 here. It's four hundred dollars here. It's two hundred bucks here. You can do things you and your partner and your wife. You do things so you're not spending, let's say, or you. So, it's totally affordable. The whole construction thing is affordable. And if you can't afford pumas, then maybe you look at something else. You go to dump sites, get a whole bunch of polystyrene, and uh, get Harry's machine made. Or uh, uh, the other guy, Andrew, was that the uh, polystyrene acrylic? He used the lawnmower upside down, shred some polystyrene, and you have a super uh, uh, low cost insulation if you have a bit more time. So you can play around based on your finances, and then you take time off to work, or if you have a day job, basically, you as you get money in, you can continue building, you can continue building. And another thing I mentioned today, which is very important, either building alone or using the effect of the lever. So I use my head to, you know, a couple of emails, my marketing skills, my communication skills, I generate a, a, a thousand bucks with a thousand bucks uh, and don't get attached to the numbers. Yeah. With a thousand bucks, I suddenly can get uh, two guys to help me for, whatever uh, x amount of days which speeds myself up 20 fold guys you can plaster your own home but a professional plasterer will do it 50 times faster a hundred times faster than you can so why not spend instead of spending a hundred times longer why not use what your time in doing what you love to do 
or using your head or using your heart or making something or tri something, you know, but using your time and what you love to do to generate some funds to hire a professional to do a certain task or to hire a non-professional, like in my case, it was two laborers to help you with that hyper Adobe walls. So all your walls can go up in three days. So Victor, is there anything else you want to share on uh, that or anything else? No, that was, the, those are the two items that sort of popped Perfect. in my head around planning and, um, you know, having a calendar tool that you, it, it's very handy to have uh, a tool that you can easily move things around as opposed to having them on paper and having to erase things and redraw them and, you know, that kind of madness. So it's very nice to have a tool. Um, but it's very easy to get the order of things um, messed up if you don't have some form of linkage between the, the elements, right? Um, that's my only uh, my only caveat for those kind of tools. Um, just from planning project planning experience, that's that's what Thank I can you. tell you. Thanks. Um, yeah, and as far as the budgeting thing goes, it's it's kind of a it's kind of a nice thing that you can do with even with a budgeting tool like like the one you've designed where you can have the amounts embedded and then you can have you know a summary for the week ahead or the month ahead or whatever that way you can go budgeting again you know if if a budget item becomes a constraint on your critical path then you you might run into some issues with overall timing for the project but you know idea yeah, you can, what did you I, answer I just, just hang on. I just want to reemphasize: this is uh, your own. This is for your own project. Firstly, secondly, if you if I am doing the flooring and it, I don't even have to have dates as for as such. I don't even have to have a month every month's calendar. You know, I have my bill. If this week like did not happen, it rained. That's a constraint. Yeah. So Harry's whole week gets pushed further and further and further. But if Harry has his whole home planned out, okay, and he knows, like, for example, or in my case, like, I can be doing some stuff indoors, like plastering the first box, those walls inside that are under the roof already. So my second build is standing, stopped because of the weather or finance, but I have a couple of bags of cement. I have my sand. I can start plastering, you know, uh, in indoor. So that's the weather it was a constraint, but let me, sh so what I'm trying to say is that the complex planning tools that are out there, they are far beyond uh, what is needed for our own. Most of the people in this uh, um, group, uh, this is designed for them to help them build one home, maybe their second home. But, you know, it's pe other people like Harry and myself, maybe a, a couple of others that are going to continue building and building and running into this long projects and multiple projects in the future uh, and so on and so forth. And then, yes, uh, a far more refinement and better tools might be needed. But as it is, just this calendar simplified my life a hell of a lot where I stopped stressing. Because up until I had this whole thing visually like this in color, I held everything in my head. Or I tried to make it onto the standard little calendar and I'm exactly like you said, scratching and moving things. And this was really stressful. Now, um, you know, um, so if budget is a constraint, then you look at your whole home and I will be logging the whole home construction. So you guys, I'll give you this calendar when I finish my second and third arch. So you can actually look at what went in there and we'll, uh, I'll explain to you the whole calendar what happened week by week. And then you'll see, okay, so uh, let me give you an example. When the machine broke two weeks ago, yeah, I because I plan to build hyper Adobe and machine breaks right in the morning. And I have two laborers that I agreed to pay them. What, let's say you're paying $25 an hour minimum, let's say, yeah? Eight hours is 200 bucks. 
two laborers is 400 bucks or 500 bucks. They just say, you have a 500 bucks bill and not all of us are millionaires, $500 might be, you know, big money for you or, you know, or it's like, it's a, it's, it's a knock, you know? And suddenly in that, you, you planned three of those days, you've budgeted one and a half thousand dollars and you've saved up, let's say, you know, for a month to get that one and a half grand that you can hammer those walls in three days and bang your mixer breaks in the first day. If you do not have a calendar with your whole build planned out uh, in front of you, that should something like that fail, and it happened to me, I didn't know what to fill, what to let the guys do. The one guy was sweeping the container. The other guy was picking up, uh, he was helping me to fix this machine and he was picking up rubbish on the floor and I was $500 down at the end of the day if I was in America. If you have such a calendar and you know that, oh, but hang on, I have a fence that needs to be made, okay? And you've planned your life, let's say, or I have a flooring, or, or you know, whatever, I could have I could have had those guys start digging the holes for the fence, which is very useful for me. I could have had those guys, um, you know, do something else that is needed that is down the calendar. But because I didn't have that calendar, when my mixer broke, I was like, okay, well, sweep the you know you know the can't be sitting doing nothing. So basically, I wasted five hundred dollars. So that doesn't happen. I suggest that you plan your things up front and, and, and you stick to work in this calendar. Um, but yeah, so anyone else? Jeff, what do you want to share about what, what you saw? In, um, I'd, I'd like to hear what you got to say. Well, I, I was looking at it and uh, I really like your calendar. I think that's an awesome tool. Uh, what Victor was talking about uh, was written in the books by Elihu Goldratt, uh, Critical Chain Theory. And I've read all those books and that, that's a very useful thing, especially if you're in high production, high speed, you really need to, to nail that down. Now what you're doing is not high production, high speed, but you still do need a plan. So I think what you're doing is awesome there on that. So um, like Victor said, there's certain things you can't do before other things. And we know that, and you have to keep that in mind, but I think your tool is very useful for that. So um, one thing on the concrete, just as an aside, uh, the places that sell concrete have busted bags. You can get very cheap or free. I, I have a friend that uh, uh, the hardware store gave him three pallets of concrete for free, no cost. And then I myself, I bought a pallet of concrete bags of concrete for thirty dollars so that, that might be useful for somebody in the future and talking about doing some things before you can do others uh something i heard yesterday which i highly agree with what you said one of the things in our case would be running an air pipe for whatsoever to allow mm -hmm. for example the fresh uh air that comes in underneath the ground and enters the home to deliver air that's not minus 30 Fahrenheit, but actually right. uh, a positive earth temperature. Now imagine your wife has planted strawberries and you know, um, and now suddenly you need to get an excavator to, <laughs> to run a trench. You know, you're gonna have some serious issues. Uh, right. With confrontations with your wife. So, so before you plant your first bush on your land, <laughs> You got to know, like, where is your water coming from? Because that's also going to be trenched in a cold climate. Um, and where is your air going to come from? And do all that, uh, all that stuff uh, before you start planting. Right. Yeah, we're the same here. We, I have to bury my water line five feet deep and then come up underneath inside. And now, So I live in a travel trailer. So I, I've buried it underneath and I come up underneath the floor and I have that uninsulated space there. So I've also took a, um, a heat tape and I, I ran it down all the way down to the, to the five foot level. And if my water line freezes, then I, I just plug it in and three hours later, my, my water is, is running again. But, Amazing. 
that's a just like you. You know, we have to go underground and come back up. So, but five feet is insanely deep. Uh, yeah. I mean, what climate? How cold does it get? Uh, it's uh, so typically the ground only freezes uh, one foot. That's yeah. typical, but it, of course we Water. can get we can get to minus 40 here so it's it's unusual but they do have minus 40 that'll get no most winters at uh, minus 40 fahrenheit so most winters it's about uh minus five to to maybe minus 20 uh, uh, just for a few days not for a long long time but they have had weeks long periods here that it was minus 40 so that's the reason why we had to bury so deep is for yeah, the same worst. same here um at minus 40 it's the same fahrenheit or celsius it's uh and it's also freaking cold um but minus 40 can go for you know a good 10 days here and then uh back to minus 20s and 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 whatever and then you to get oh, maybe two bouts of the minus 40 so yeah your your frost depth is uh several feet um there are parts of alberta and canada if you go north enough to the uh where the oil sands are and stuff their designated frost depth is over nine feet um so you're actually going like to put in proper you know fence posts and that kind of stuff so that they don't end up late you know getting pushed around by the frost you're, you're talking eight to nine feet in the ground before you even have anything above ground so wow these kind thank of weather you. extremes do exist yeah thank you uh, tina you wanted to share something or oh, ask something um yeah can you hear me yeah i was just intrigued by the um what is it called critical process so i just had a couple questions for that gentleman i forget his name victor victor is that um in this in this model in this ideal victor can you hear me yep yep um is it is it always based on a set budget is the budget the setter of your direction um no i think the the, the budget is um is basically an outcome as you go you know as you go like you can try and budget everything ahead of time but that's going to change as well as the scheduling of your individual items in your project so like you you break up your project into the different uh bits that that you know at whatever granular level that you feel comfortable with you know like for example uh you might have like putting up the walls might be one of your boxes but you know someone else might say well that involves you know renting a machine getting the the stuff that you're going to put in the bags getting the bags doing each bag how much does each bag take as far as time goes and whatever so you might you can break it down into like really tiny things or you can break it down into you know bigger like each wall is going to take two days or whatever the the measure is right and that's your that's your block then for each of those blocks, then you can assign a, a budget, right? And that you can run your budget like that. Usually the budget doesn't run the process because the each of your boxes that you're putting together is a is a task that needs to be done. And then you you can have a budget number for each box that you then add up. And then you can find out what your total budget cost is, right? And then if that if that budget is too big then you have to go back to your boxes and try and see if you can shave costs somehow but that the, the budget is kind of an outcome of what's in your in your design mm. thanks Victor. thank you um yeah so just again just to remind you guys uh, as i'm running things on a shoestring budget i am um i'm really 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 trying to figure the cheapest way to do everything but yet keep it quality because like I, in my case, I didn't go for wood shavings because my home is directly on the, on the ground and not raised above the ground with 
with you know on um, what those poles that are, you know those screw in poles those screw in foundation yeah um then you can get your home you have a like jeff said the empty space between the floor and the ground so in my case i will wait i am ending up going for the scoria pumice story or puffed clay in my uh, case um to to get myself because and that's obviously very expensive much more expensive as uh, in comparison to free wood shavings um where was i going with this oh blank tower but basically just to gain just to reiterate you, you, uh, the budget is the result of the planning process yeah um and i am like i know now the three guys, myself and two guys, with a simple the trolley without even wheels. It's a wooden trolley that, you know, Daryl made one is on YouTube. I'll I'll share my plans and and I do and I will uh, in this course. Um, three people with that trolley can do seventy five meters of hyper adobe bag, two hundred and ten feet, two hundred and twenty feet long in one day. Okay of uh, 40 centimeter bag. So that's uh, one foot and three inches wide when it's flat. And when it's stomped, it's about this size, which is 35 centimeters wide by 11 high. It's a standard size you get in America as well. That red one that you're seeing all over the internet. That's 40 centimeters wide. Um, yeah, what a, the, the, it's 15 inch uh, or so, a, a flat, when it's flat, flat on a roll, like toilet paper. So. And in terms of cement, I'll also record that, so I'll be able to tell you, but uh, I believe about 12 bags of cement of 50 kilograms uh, in weight we used per day, plus minus. Um, and that gave us those two, 210 feet. So you can do your calculations now. Uh, and I'm sorry, it's all in kilograms, but I'll just give you in kilograms and meters. So uh, six, hundred kilograms of cement gave me two uh, 75 meters so what's then um, 75 meters is in feet so let me get you uh, per meter um so 600 uh, so basically what we have is we have a formula that you can uh, you have eight kilograms of cement Per meter, no, can't be. Eight kilograms, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight kilograms of cement, eight kilograms of cement per meter of hyper adobe bag. So you can convert that into, into uh, pounds and feet, and you have a formula of what, how much you need. And obviously, you need 10 times more uh, sand. So you need 80 kilograms of sand to eight kilograms of cement to get one meter of this sausage done, which is still way, 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 way cheaper than bricks. Yeah. So add that to your labor cost and you can have a per meter price. So, you know, with two laborers, you can have 210 feet done. Um, yeah. Three of those days and all your walls are built uh that are, that are needed and we are trying to go for the cheapest and fastest way to get under roof that's still beautiful so no i don't have windows in my sides but i have a front glass facade and i have a back glass facade uh, what's larum will have a front glass facade and back glass will be covered by the uh, you know like an airship but let's say behind jeff is a stunning view and let's say that's the only view he has. Uh, I would say it doesn't matter which direction. If you don't have that view, let's say in any other direction, and that, that view is on the northern side, like in my case, then it would be a sin. And if you're living in a tiny plot that you can't build more homes, and that's the only place you have, and that's the only view, and you have neighbor on the left, neighbor on the right, neighbor on the other side, and you have a stunning forest on, on your northern side, uh, that's why I ended up with a glass facade on my northern side 
and the glass facade on my southern side to bring in the sun. It's a crazy thing, but it would be a sin for me to cover a view as good as Jeff's behind Jeff, you know, even if it's on my northern side. So the arches, these vaults, just to finish up on the vaults, these vaults are a fastest way and the cheapest way you can get under roof that can give you volume. Sure, an aircrete dome um, is also very fast. And with bricks, you can get a dome up in two weeks, you know, a shell, a shell. Then don't confuse yourself between a shell and something you can live in. You know, it still took me uh, months to fill it, finish that aircrete dome that we built at our workshop in two weeks. So, but an aircrete dome is like you know, a tiny space. It's like, you know, it's a round floor. Uh, you know, you got a sculpt furniture for it, uh, you know, because a couch won't fit. And it's like, you know, even, even Harry, I will remember speaking to him two years ago. And Harry said that by the end of summer, he'll have all eight domes ready. And when we, you know, when we envision our projects, we believe that they're going to be uh, ready that fast. But two years later, and that's what happened with me. I thought I'm going to have that Portillarium mini. I'm designed it so small, so small. So I could have it done in one season. And two years later, I'm almost finished the foundation. So, but again, to come back that I did want to suffer and I got the suffering experience. So I could kick it all up and say, okay, I'm going to Siberia, <laughs> you know? Um, but if you are serious about getting your home done, uh, I would highly recommend to look into these vaults that I've built in Siberia, but it's quite low, or the one I'm doing now. And there are a ton of them in America, and I'm sure they have the approvals already. And if they don't, maybe even you get that floor space to under 200 square foot. But because you have a rectangle, and it's unlike I'm saying it, but because you have a rectangle, a 200 square foot rectangle and 18 foot high, I don't know what your limitations there, and you string a dream catcher net, strong dream catcher net, maybe one, two. So you can have a sleeping space or storage space right on top, top where your kids can climb. You have a second floor that you can utilize, for, let's say for more sleeping or climbing and chilling with bean bags. And you have official floor space, which the code can, you know, uh, can, uh, can hold you accountable for. And your, your floor space is uh, 200 square foot. So you stay under the legal uh, um, you know, so you don't have to submit any plans, but you have another 200 square foot above you with bean bags and this dream catcher net. And, you know, they're so easy to make a net. You just have to uh, put little anchors into your arches, the, into the wooden arches, those little, you know, things that you screw in with little loops. And through those loops, you, 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 you wire, you, 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 you weave a dream catcher. Yeah which is YouTube is full of how you do a dream catch. It's a very cool process with kids, by the way. But you make a giant one on this whole rectangle. And then you go and you do the top. So what I'm trying to say is be below code, be under the code radar, we have uh, 400 and another maybe 100, 500 square foot home uh, under the code radar, um, just like tallish, you know, and it's really, really, really affordable. Uh, really affordable. You don't even have to have the curvy walls like I've done. Just two straight walls, hyper adobe, and then you go up. Remember we, we spoke in the beginning that the arch like this, shallow arch will put a lot of thrust sideways. That's what I was planning on doing. That's why I have those curvy walls because I didn't want the walls to topple over. Yeah, and that's why they're curvy. But I ended up going with this high arched uh, A-frame thing. And that arch pushes down. So just a singular straight wall would be sufficient to support that. And um, you have a 20-foot high building. And you I don't know what your height restrictions in America for under the, staying under the code. 
but uh, your floor space is under the code and you're, you've got 20 foot height. Jeff, what are your thoughts on this, uh, the, this type of construction, these, these arches that we're talking about? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we, ha we have the arch construction here in the Northwest. Uh, there, there used to be someone that made a kit for that evidently. And it, there's a lot of arch buildings that, are, that were probably built in the, the 60s and 70s here. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll try to remember, to, there's one in our town here, that the little town that I, we're close to, I'll take a picture of it. And it, evidently it was just a kit that people bought and then they either finished it out either as a shop or as a house or uh, the one here as a business. Uh, but, uh, and it's similar to yours as far as it, the Gothic arch where it's real steep. And then as far as the, uh, in our area, I don't know what the height restriction is, uh, but the, what the rule is, is that your upstairs can't have a ceiling taller than five feet. So you can have a solid floor, but it, it has to have a ceiling that's five feet or lower or else you have to count that as the square footage of the house. So uh -huh. you could have the 200 square foot, like you're saying, and then you could have a second level that has to be below, be five foot or lower. And it could be the another 200 square feet, but it just has to be five foot or lower. So a sleeping area would be fine, you know, or something like that, or storage or whatever. And, and so. guys, I just want to reiterate, thank you, Jeff. Thanks so much. That these arches are so simple to make. Uh, in fact, Americans are kick ass at it. Uh, you can use thin planks, it uses very little timber, very strong. Uh, they're making a lot of greenhouses. And I've been posting some stuff on the Wetelarium group. Have a look at those uh, videos. Um, you do not have to have a kit. Uh, the roof is really easy to put together, to put up. I've recorded the whole process. I'm going to be editing it this fall. If you are desperate for the footage, I can get you a, a raw, unedited footage of how I did all. Let's say, Losha, I'm doing the, I'm doing the roof. Can you show me? I quickly pull up on my computer. I'll show you. I, I, I quickly explain to you. So you don't have to wait for the fall if you want to start building. You just, you know, uh, uh, come to one of these Sunday sessions. Losha, uh, how, how the hell did I put up the roof? What did I do there? I quickly you know, share my screen. Um, go, okay, let's look at that. What do we do with the roof? Uh, here we go. Yeah, here's the beams preparation. Here, how I level them, you know, so they're all parallel uh, sockets. So I got all the footage for you. You know, the, the, there's the arches going up, you know, so you just have to ask and, uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> here, here, here's the arches, uh, here the, yeah, here, 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 here they're being ready. I, I'm making them by myself. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm carrying it by myself. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's all there. You just ask, so Losha, what the hell did you do? And I will be perfecting this method. Um, you know, I'm going to use even bolts, but this is a really cheap, guys, this is, I know timber is expensive in your couch, but you can get secondhand plywood. We already spoke about it. And I just use nails, no glue. Um, yeah, so if, wherever you need, it's all there. It's it's all there. Um, yeah. Hey, Losha, I, I got a couple more comments. Yeah. So uh, I was thinking about when I worked in North Dakota, I worked with some guys out there that were from Alaska, and they did construction uh, in North Dakota, but they also did construction in Alaska. Mm -hmm. And uh what they told me is that the area that they were working uh, has a, a short summertime and then a long winter time. And he's, they said that the, the companies that they worked for up there, they only did outside work only during that season. So they did nothing inside. They only did outside work. And then boom, the season's over with, and now the winter's here, the ground's frozen, you can't do anything outside, and then they only did inside work, and that gave them the ability to work around the year. They said otherwise, if they try to go from start to finish, they would be unemployed during the winter. So I thought that was a good thing. 
And then a, a yeah, second just, thing. Yeah, just to comment on that, very important. Uh, 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 I'm listening. I'm just was looking for these arches for you guys. Um, uh, just to, yes, I got to the same thing. That's why I'm building three boxes unfinished. Uh, so then I can finish them up in autumn and winter because if I, uh, because when the gr starts freezing, wherever starts freezing, <laughs> freezing temperature starts freezing, cement can't set without special additives, and work sucks outdoor in at minus forty. Okay, so yes, I agree with what Jeff is saying, and that is the reason why I want to bang out three boxes before the end of summer so it can take the autumn to finish our home and then the home next door for, for Zoya's mom um, because in Russia uh, uh, old age homes are not um, accepted. I mean, it, they just it's, it's against our culture and tradition to leave an old elderly person in an old age home country to um, Europe and um, South Africa, America, all over the place, Australia, where old age homes are very popular but anyway, that's off topic. Uh, just, uh, Jeff, uh, I'll carry on, but I'm, I'll just be clicking pictures to show you what the hell we're talking about. Yeah, we're listening. Yeah, for, uh, for an example of that, on my own place, I I ran a, a gas line for, for propane, and I, I did that in November. Well, in November, our ground was already frozen one foot deep. So I have a little backhoe, a small one, you know, it'll dig six feet deep, but I couldn't dig that first foot. I had to pick that out with a, with a, a pick. Mm -hmm. and, and then uh, once I got through that first foot, then I was able to take the backhoe and, and dig it. But then a second thing that I wanted to comment on was just something funny, but along the lines of, of this is uh, uh, Mike Ayler that wrote the $50 and up underground house book. You know, I met him a few years before he died and we were friends. So he, he told me that he had the concept of festering. He said that uh, often whenever he was building, he would get stumped and he couldn't figure out how to do what he was trying to do. And he said it, it would just be so, so frustrating to him. So he said what he would do is he said he, he called it festering. He said he'd go do anything and everything but what he needed to do right then. And he said it will build up and build up and build up until he comes back and then he easily went went through it he said it it's a uh, um uh, it builds up inside your body <laughs> but anyway I, I thought that was a, a a funny approach that he took to that you know if he had a um a design problem that he ran into he would design his places ahead of time but then reality is you get in there and you're looking at it, oh that ain't gonna work you know so then he would go and do something else so we're talking about that that's what your scheduling is is going and doing something else but he said he would just walk away from it and and go do something else for days or even weeks and then he'd come back to that that one that was uh had him stumped so I yeah thought that was a uh jeff it's a very important thing what you just said um because that's another thing that i'm like yesterday i went and i you know out to the beach and I took my sleeping bag, although I ran back because I was getting bitten by mosquitoes. But putting in the best rest uh, is to do a completely different activity. So like today I spent time marketing and sending emails and typing text for our next YouTube video. Um, and then a second part of the day, just before this class, you know, three, four hours I went on the land and I had a bit of the water tank uh, sorted. So what I'm trying to say is, um, again, you try to think that, oh no, I need to have it all, all the time in the world. I need to take two months off to get my house built. No, no, you can continue doing what you're doing. And with COVID, the biggest blessing came to all of us is that a lot of jobs, uh, and I might be wrong, but I know a lot of jobs allow um, online, working from online. So you could spend very focused time online. Then you go and hammer away about a two, two hours on your, um, you know, like, uh, like I had a base for the water tank. Now it's sorted. Tomorrow I could go get a secondhand water tank or whatever. Uh, those thousand liter uh, IBC white tanks, those three foot by four foot. Yeah. 
because it was cage and I could ha- I could get it right up um, and my, I have a pump again I didn't dig a professional well everybody gets an excavator to dig a well in my ca- country here the here, here the, where I live now the water is so close I got one guy to dig for a day and he or half a day he dug uh, like five foot hole in a square mm-hmm. I put a uh, in, in in the water course I teach you basically I took an old water tank I drilled some holes in it I covered it with geotextile I threw a pump in there I took my hyper adobe bag covered from top tied it all up so I don't have all the soil going into my pump like a little pre-screen filter and I lowered that into this hole and my pump is getting water from this hole that we dug by hand. Usually an excavator would, you know, cost you. Obviously, you can't do this in like towels where the water is 300 feet deep. But, you know, um, uh, I think what I'm trying to say is just you've got to be creative and not have, or, or you know, two months all in one go. Uh, but little budgets. I think what I'm trying to explain is Little bit budgets with this calendar, you can plan your phases and stages. Uh, you know, like stage would be like a whole flooring, yeah, uh, or phase, yeah. Little stage or block, you know, there's different words for it. Would be the sub floor, the um, let's say the the floor, the the rough floor, or and the finished floor. And in that could be the water pex pipes if you're doing that or whatever so these are all different you know and you don't have to have it all done so overall bit by bit your build gets done by play hammering in two hours there two hours there obviously hyper adobe walls will take very long time that's what happened in my build two years ago is that three hours at a time it takes very long that's why sure get some things done where you have three hours here and three hours there but plan for those three, four days that you could get two laborers, hire a machine, have your cement, have your bag, you watch the videos, you did a test by yourself with a friend or with your wife first, yeah? And then you get those laborers, you hammer it away, and three days later, you get all your work done. Mm -hmm. Yes, you'll need three, four days for that. And you need to plan those in. And then you boom, you tight on funds again. Your job is taking your time. You take two hours here, two hours there, 50 bucks here, 50 bucks there. Your build continues. And then again, you could be with your wife, with your partner together, bending those arches. Just two people, even one person, but two people is better. You're bending the arches. One person, I put all those arches, mounted them together. Then save up, save up, save up, save up, save up. Boom, you hire a crane. Boom, you and the crane driver lift up those arches, place them, do, 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 do. three hours, all your arches are up. Again, you tight on funds, you slowly save up for plywood, save up for plywood, or get one plywood, two plywood, and you slowly cover it up, get a, a piece of plastic that, that can stay dry, and then you save up, save up, save up, save up, boom, you get the insulation. Two days, you get all the insulation up with one laborer. That's what I'm trying to share with you, that you do not need to have all the money and all the time, but you can continue building. And I am doing it. And I've spent, you know, not more than uh, what you see right now. I think $3,000 on this phone so far. Secondhand windows. I looked at secondhand windows. There were a, a quarter of the price of the new ones and they're in great shape and they're massive four of them immediately delivered there were five hundred dollars for all four second hand true triple pane triple pane glass for cold prime so anyway a- anybody else wants to add anything jeff or anyone else uh, before we wrap up was that inspiring for you uh, yeah yeah uh one more thing oh uh, I, I would say when you're planning to your, your build, um, what I've noticed, even small projects that I had to build, I, I noticed a lot of times it would take an entire day. So 
from my experience now, uh, even if it's a small project, I just allot the day for that project. Because like uh, the other day I had to build a, a door for my chicken coop. Uh, I'm using one of my domes as a chicken coop for my ducks and chickens. And I had to build a door and I was using plywood. I mean, I was using uh, pallets. So I got the pallets for free. And so I, I had to break the boards up. I was planing them and getting the wood ready. And I, I was able to make a nice door, but it you know, turned out it took the entire day. So now when I'm making plans to do something, I just say, it's going to take the whole day to do this, even if it's something small. So that, that's one thing um, I, I can say, you know, when it comes to the scheduling, a lot the day for a project, even small ones, because you don't know what's, what's going to pop up or what, what troubles you might run into that you have to solve, you know, and why not. So that, that's a, another piece of advice that, that I could throw in there. Totally, is, uh, the totally agree. Projects. Totally and I would, agree with it. I, with I would Harry also there. say, uh, I would also add that, guys, very important, before you hire those two laborers to get your wall, let's just talk about an example of the walls. Uh, if you haven't built with Hyper Adobe before, I would highly recommend that you uh, get the machine, uh, you know, obviously if you're renting to try and save funds, get it the day before, have it all tested with you and your partner or you and your friend or you alone, make a load, uh, have that trolley obviously designed like I used, yeah, um, to feed the Hyper Adobe bag, test it out, test everything that's working. Once you're sure that it's all working, only then hire laborers. Because if you hire laborers, if something is not working, you will still have to pay for them. And you have zero production done like I, I, I had. Done. So that's why I had my wife come in when we rented that machine. And I said, I need help. I, I need help to test this thing out. So also um, uh, have your tools ready maybe for the following day. Uh, spades, whatever you'll be using, maybe have it all you know, brought out that you don't have to mission while men are waiting. Uh, and these are uh, things that where the calendar comes in hand and you, 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 you block it and you, you know, you spot it in there for under preparation work. So I'm going to send you that calendar file in the, in all our telegram groups. So if you haven't make any uh, improvements, um, please uh, share it back with us. Just a Anyone small else? point. Just a small point to add to uh, Harry's comment. I totally agree. And the, one of the reasons is that it's kind of like painting, right? You, you look at a room and you go, well, how long will it take to paint this room? And you, you put that down as your time. But it turns out that, you know, the prep time is probably three to four times longer than the actual painting time. And um, and and that gets missed with the with the looking at the room as like, how long will it take to paint? It's, it's not so much how long to take the paint, but to get the painting project done, it involves all of that prep. So um, I, I would allot a day to it, just like Harry would for, for even the smaller projects, because it's it's the prep time, it's a setup, setup time, setting up your location, your site, you know, putting everything in, in, in order to get going. And anyway. Um, I'd like to add on that, that that's something the calendar is missing. It's missing the hours. Uh, and I haven't gone to those details um, because uh, I, in my case, uh, although my wife was trying to tell me, you've got to have everything planned to the last hour, um, I'm finding it, it's not necessary for me because I'm not on this go, 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 uh, drowning in debt. Uh, a capitalistic story uh, although you know money is very very important uh, highly important but I'm like the prep work will take as long as it needs to take so uh, yeah I'm very very bad with this like the other day I told the worker that I'd pick him up at lunch because I had to go to St. Petersburg to go and fetch the, the 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 mixer 
guys it took me i arrived back at seven o'clock in the evening <laughs> so <laughs> um i can't comment here uh and that's why i left the time out because um you know you never know that you're gonna get stuck in traffic doing this thing and that thing so yes uh, uh collecting a mixer is a, is 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 a day gone because but even if you arrive let's say at two o'clock in the afternoon you might want to take a nap or there's a lunch or there's some emails or whatever and before you know the day is gone so yes collecting a, a task like collecting a mixer a concrete mixer it could be a day gone so you, then you got to start that's why i was so anal with my wife and say no i want to buy this mixer because i knew uh it's it's that valuable time to 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 collect the mixes my day gone and to drop off the mixer four days uh, four days later my day gone um but then if you look at my calendar i took a day off in st petersburg to go and get inspiration from the architecture so you could you know that doubles up was uh alternating your 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 life so uh, because if if you uh, although it on calendar it might be like no i'll just whip out a six day working week guys by the time you're on the fourth day of construction heavy duty construction you are finished finished we're talking about hyper adobe you're finished six seven days of it it's something is going to go wrong you know you're going against your natural flow can't do that so three days uh, four days is you you're tired take a day off but obviously uh expensive um countries and debts seldom allows us to take time off and hence i keep on uh sharing with you architecture that you do not have to climb into debt to build and i'm doing it debt free sure our neighbor's home went up boom in in two and a half weeks two and a half weeks they have a home ready they obviously they're doing some finishes inside what what but they're sleeping in it their car is parked in it but it's a 25 year debt <laughs> 25 year debt is it worth it sure this home is going to take me a whole summer to get it completed but so what i'm doing it on the money that comes in with the time I have, and I'm recording the footage so I could sell that footage and make the money for the next one. <laughs> so I don't know, it's just, uh, it's a whole alternative way, but I don't go for the hours in the calendar because I, I'm my whole life I've spent running by the hours and I no longer want to do that. And that's why some of us quit our corporate jobs and, so we could have this lifestyle where we're not running by half past four got to be you know obviously i i still have my calendar and i have my reminders that go off when i need to be somewhere i make sure that i set a reminder and an alarm clock to make sure that i am on time because it's highly unprofessional to miss meetings or become late which i constantly used to do prior and i'm thankfully no longer do that but that's why the calendar doesn't have hours. But if you need to implement hours for your life, then do that. Okay. Another thing to uh, to add to this is um, like last year, obviously COVID was very crazy as far as getting supplies. And, and even last year for myself, once I was ready to really get rolling on building, I ran into the issue where I could not get cement. I, it was July. I, I was I went down to my to the cement supply, my local builder, and you know I, I ordered I tried to order pallets of cement, and the the supply chain was was not there. It was non-existent, and I it was unbelievable that I couldn't get cement, which is something that I would, there was never trouble getting. So what I wanted to say is, whatever supplies you know you need. You need to inquire with your local uh, 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 hardware department or wherever you're buying your stuff to make sure they're gonna have what you need because things change now these days with supply uh, issues. So if there's something you know you need in three weeks, 
just find out, make sure they're going to have that there for you because you don't want to run into the issue that I ran into where I couldn't even get cement. I couldn't get Portland cement. It was unbelievable. It was always available. Now, all of a sudden, it wasn't. So if you need wood, you need cement, make sure it's available and you can get it. Also ask because a lot of times the prices are going up. So if you buy something this week, it might be one price and then they'll tell you the prices are going up next week. It's another question to ask your suppliers, are the prices going up anytime soon? Because a lot of times they know, they'll say, oh yeah, uh, next month it's going up. Because when I moved out here, I was paying $15 a bag of cement. Now the bags of cement are $20. So uh, that's my advice is inquire about the supplies you need and also inquire if there's any price hikes uh, coming up soon. So you could purchase your things before those price hikes. Yeah, I have two two little things to add. There. Thanks, Harry. Very nice. Very 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 re relevant. First of all, uh, I'm like in the second biggest city in uh, uh, you know, and all 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 they have is a brown roof where I'm living. Like everybody, brown, red, and green. I'm like, but I'm sure there's orange roofs. So when I had the whole home ready. Yeah, like at, at this stage where all the arches were ready, insulation. I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll call and I'll have the roof, you know, delivered tomorrow. And that just stopped me. <laughs> They're like, no, 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 we have to manufacture this for you. It comes in flat sheets and we have to press it down for you to get it into this, uh, you know, long sheet. And by the way, I wasn't ordering long. I was ordering them in short pieces that I could collect in my car. Thank God I... I phoned them in time just before they would cut all my pieces into these long ones because I saw an American, this kit company, the Jeff or, or Arch kits, I saw how they're installing the roofs of these long sheets. But basically, like you, you, you think you can get something, like Harry says, I thought I could get the roof, surely, like orange roof, you know? No, I had to wait for it uh, six working days. Um, now, if you think, you know, that, that's something to consider because uh, so that's where the calendar comes in handy because on the next build, uh, two weeks before, in fact, right now I've got my walls ready. I'm going to be starting to bend the arches, yeah, for the second uh, uh, room. Um, as, as I'm bending the arches, I should be, I should be ordering the next roof. Because by the time I bend all the arches, it's one day to have them, uh, you know, with a crane. One day they're all up, yeah. Uh, next day or two, all the wood is up, the the, the covering of of timber, uh, yeah. Next day, all the insulation is up. Uh, next day, all the rakes are up. The even half, the same day as the roof by the way, same day as the roof. And, uh, and then the same day, the roof is up. One day. So if you got to the stage where you have this insulation and, and, and uh, the weather turns bad for you, then you need to, you know, and suddenly you left with, let's say, three weeks before your, uh, your roof can arrive. Let's just say, like, like Harry says, cement wasn't there. Um, then you're standing with a with a uh, with a situation where you have insulation up, and if the water gets in all in between that, then the thing starts to mold um, because it, it's not like exposed wood; it's all covered by insulation, two layers of insulation, so the water can all get you know it can start breeding mold in between that. So. Plan for these things, uh, and that's why this calendar will help you. Um, and uh, the next thing that I struggled was, depending where you are, I couldn't find ladders. So after spending a couple of hours on the phone trying to hire ladders, I said, I've had enough of, of, of phoning around. There's no ladders around. And buying a ladder was like, you know, two ladders was like $500 or something. So I made ladders. I got up and the same day as the guys were placing the insulation, I, you know, uh, there, I'm 
you know, I, I'm making those ladders and I, and I whipped those and it was really, really good, valuable. First we tried with this ladder, but it wasn't bending at all. And then, um, yeah, then I just, uh, you know, <clears throat> there it is. One thing, and then I saw it was bending too much. So I just put one rib on the bottom half. One rib <laughs> on the bottom half. So when I tell you, I, I try and use the least amount of, uh, you know, money and materials, I mean it. I used one, a six meter ladder and a 18 foot tall. And I used one rib on the first um, nine feet. Uh, only on the right and that um, allowed for big men to climb up and this ladder perfect work there they are standing with one room so anyone wants to add anything when we're wrapping this call up um, just one last thing the <clears throat> the formula is already inserted for the numbers yeah so as, as you change, um, uh, you know, it, you'd be in the dollars. So you'd, you'd add your $200, one, you know, $100 or whatever your, your price is. So here, that, that'd be here, higher Bible plate, let's say, uh, uh, whatever, $200 and your label at $300, yeah? So your total will be $500, yeah? Um, and there, your total for the week is 900 yeah? Uh, this is uh, this is the way you get your, your overall theme for the week. Uh, this can expand, like I want to get walls done. Um, yeah, uh, uh, this week I was focusing on finance. I didn't get much done. This week coming now, I was focusing on subfloor, but now I'm actually moving my fence week. So I'm looking into the fence week and I'll be shuffling things. So you could obviously expand that thing a bit bigger. So make it, yeah, you know how Excel works. You can grab all four, all four blocks and, uh, um, you know, grow them, they'll all grow simultaneously, yeah? Um, so just play with it and um, improve it. If you have anything better, then I'm, I'll be glad to implement it into overall version and send it to everybody. Okay.